What's going on Island Hoppers? Today we are going to talk about scams in Mexico. If you're thinking about coming to Mexico and you want to stay safe, you're going to want to watch this video. Let's do it. Before we get into anything, I just want to say that you're going to have a lot of fun when you come down to Mexico. Mexico is a really fun place and I absolutely love Mexico and I'll say it right now, Viva la Mexico, okay? But I do want to say there are some things that you have to watch out for in Mexico because it's tourist destinations there's going to be scams no matter where you go in the world there's going to be scam artists in those destinations and Mexico is not immune to it so let's talk about it. The thing we're going to talk about is going to be the ATM machines out here in Mexico so this is not unique to Mexico but there are these type of ATM machines out here that are going to cause you some problems so here's what they do. They tell you there's going to be a bank fee, so a bank fee that you have to pay to the bank or the processing company. Then there's a lower conversion rate than the actual proper conversion rate. You always know the proper conversion rate if you go online and you know how much one US dollar is to how many pesos. Okay, so once you know that conversion rate, you'll be able to compare that against what that ATM is actually giving you. But here's where they really stick it to you. Then they say that they wanna charge sometimes 20 30 40 dollars on top of all of that other stuff to just make the transaction so a 200 dollars withdrawal turns into a 240 dollars withdrawal because there's some add-on fees out here on some of these atms and i've even had these in resorts and they are really annoying i've seen other people complaining screaming at the machines even getting so hostile they go to the front desk to ask what's going on so it's not something that's just an atm on the side of the street they're also in these hotels out here unfortunately and it's really a pain in the butt this is something that you'll want to pay attention to fake taxis so yeah in some cities across mexico they do have the uber set up although they're not supposed to but we've ridden an uber out here and the app worked so we used it uh, but there is a clash between taxi drivers and Uber. Now, additionally, on top of that, you have these freelance people who call themselves taxis, but they're not. So when you're looking for a non-fake taxi, you wanna make sure they actually have the credentials on their windshield or somewhere in their car that has an identification number. The best way to get around this is just going to be going to your hotel, telling them that you're looking for a taxi cab and they will hook you up. But if you're out in the streets and you're maybe out late and you need a taxi going back to your uh, hotel or whatnot, that's when you run the risk of getting into a fake taxi. So go to the bartender or go to the hostess and ask them if they can help you. Uh, but please, be aware there are some taxi drivers out there that are actually fake and that's when problems can happen all right guys so this one is uh, a little bit tricky it's fake jewelry they're gonna say that it's real silver or real gold or real whatever lapis lazare or obsidian and then you're gonna get home and you're gonna have someone who's a jeweler look at you and say that's not real here's an example this is alpaca that's not real silver uh, I bought it on the beach in Cabo San Lucas when I was having a few drinks. Now it's pretty nice. What I'm saying is it's not worth the price that I paid for it because I paid real silver price for alpaca. Now some of you are going to say, oh, what a, what a goofball. Why would you buy alpaca? Well, because I didn't have the understanding of what real silver was versus fake silver. But now that I do, fake silver doesn't tarnish. Real, or real silver doesn't tarnish fake silver does okay so just be aware that they're going to try and sell you some fake jewelry especially the guys who walk up and down the beach or the vendors who are not inside a store those guys are probably selling you fake stuff so don't pay real prices pay fake prices if you know what I'm saying again another experience that I personally had was activity scams so You'll be sitting there at a street vendor and they'll be trying to sell you a activity. Well, you're looking at it and you're like seeing this really nice dune buggy or this really nice bike or this really blue water or something where they're using a fake picture, not actually of the activity. And so uh, here's just an example. We saw this dune buggy. We paid really high price, actually more than what it cost to get an actual uh, rental car. 
And we get there and we're like, this is not what the picture looked like. And so we ended up paying for what the picture looked like, but not what we actually got. On top of the fact they threw in all these add-ons that we didn't even have time for that we had to pay for. So they're like, oh, we'll give you all this access to a water park on top of this and that. And then by the time you're actually doing all the activities, you look at your clock and you're like, I don't even have time to even use this activity. So there's like this like real like jamming of like uh, activities into one. And then you realize you only have time to really do uh, everything in limitations or not all the activities that are thrown in there and then sometimes they say all inclusive and then you're like having to pay for things on top of that that's not to mention the constant hassling for tips that come at the end so it's like you always get this sob story i work for tips we only make money on tips propina propina is tips in espanol so i've noticed that this comes up pretty much every time and it's always uh a little bit more than what you're bargaining for so just be aware of that All right, guys, so the next thing is going to be using your credit card over your debit card, but preferentially, you're gonna actually wanna use cash. Uh, cash is probably your best uh, bargain. Uh, debit cards, the reason you don't wanna use those is because in some circumstances, this happens very seldomly, but it happens enough to make a point of it. Uh, if you need to reverse a transaction where you got overcharged or there was some sort of problem, it's easier to reverse a credit card transaction. So Chase Sapphire, American Express, as a matter of fact, I'll put some links below to sign up for some of these credit cards that I personally use, Amex and Chase Sapphire, if you guys want to sign up for those links below. But that's not a gimmick. That's the truth. I use my credit card by preference over my debit card. Like I very seldomly pull out my debit card to make a transaction in a machine because again, from what I've been told and from what I understand, it's easier to reverse a credit card transaction than it is a debit card transaction. But uh, cash is going to be your best alternative, although it's really hard to reverse that transaction once it's in a scammer's pocket. You're not getting that back unless you have some sort of miracle touch, but that's just some things to keep in mind. That's why I pointed out in this video. So for those of you who actually drink tequila or any sort of alcohol, sometimes you might notice that the alcohol tastes stronger at other places. It's not watered down because some of these bars, especially the ones along the streets, I've even heard chains do this. I'm not going to say any names, but you'll notice that the alcohol is not so strong because it's watered down. They water down their tequila. You won't believe it. And uh, you'll know real tequila from fake tequila once you've had a real tequila, okay? So the next thing is these tequila scams where they say, hey, you want a free shot? You go in there and you get a free shot. Next thing you know, you're a little bit buzzed. They got you a little bit buzzed. They keep giving you these different varieties of samples and you're like, wow, I'm getting free samples. But next thing you know, they're coming in with high pressure salesmen to really lock you in to buying some of the most expensive tequila you've ever bought in your life. You go to the grocery store, wherever you're from, you'll get a bottle of tequila for no more than $30. Maybe if you buy Patron, it's a little bit more. Out here, you might spend up to $300 on a bottle of tequila if they get you into their shop and tell you this is the best tequila, it comes from the best agave, blah, blah, blah. So I would say that's something to be aware of. Now, I'm not saying that the it doesn't have value. I'm just saying that I question whether or not a bottle of tequila that you can drink in a whole day between you and two people very easily without feeling overly intoxicated is worth $300. On this one, I wanna talk about restaurant scams. Again, I've experienced this, this is how I know. I've been in Mexico long enough to experience all types of different scams. That's why I make this video. The restaurant scam is where they get you a little bit of drinks and then they come up to you with this really like pep rally cheerleader kind of person and she's got a whistle and this and that, and she's encouraging you. And she's like, do you wanna buy shots? And do you wanna buy shots from all these people for all these people? And you're like, sure, why not? You know, you're a little bit buzzed. The next thing you know, they're charging you $12 per shot times five people three times. So you've just bought five people, three shots each. And the next thing you know, that happened in like the span of 15 minutes because they're using a whistle and they're having fun. And the next thing you know, you're spending $150 on shots or whatever the total may be, depending on the situation. And you're like, I was just 
here for 15 minutes and you're charging me $150 for tequila shots? Yeah, they do that. And then they'll say, oh, well, let me talk to my manager and see if I can get you a better deal. And then they'll come back and they'll say, well, we could save you $20 or whatever the pesos are. And uh, I've had that happen. Never again will it happen, uh, hopefully. So as unfortunate as this sounds, you're gonna have to watch out for Svengali type uh, people who are gonna come up to you. They're gonna try and befriend, befriend you. They've seen that you've been having a good time. They're gonna come up and they're gonna start talking to you. The next thing you know, you're gonna be locked into a long-term conversation with these people and they're trying to sell you all sorts of illicit drugs or all these different things that you really don't want. And they're going to just kind of charm you like a snake charmer, right? And you're gonna be like, okay, I don't want anything, but you're not trying to be rude and tell them to goodbye. But what ends up ultimately possibly happening from this is what they call express kidnappings. And express kidnappings are basically where they kind of uh, sucker you in late at night, they kind of catch, catch you off guard. And then what can ultimately happen is they take you from ATM to ATM to ATM until you ultimately hit your withdrawal uh, maximum. And so I've heard about this, uh, it's, kinda, it's like uh, express kidnappings or sideways kidnappings, they kind of happen late at night or in the evening time. It's really hard for them to do it in the daytime. So you have to watch out with befriending certain people at the bar, especially if they're trying to get you suckered into certain things because they really are like the snake charmer. And I know people are gonna say, well, you know, that's common sense, but these kind of things do happen and uh, you know, you gotta watch out for it. All right, this is another thing that uh, happens out here is they'll have a lot of little kids come up to you trying to sell you chocolates or little trinkets and you have like three-year-olds, four-year-olds. And I know you wanna buy off that little kid because you're like, oh my gosh, this cute little kid wants to sell me something and he's so sweet and he looks like he's doing a good job. But what's, what that's doing is that it's basically empowering child labor. And I know your heart might be in the right place when you're buying off one of those kids, but what ultimately is happening is you're encouraging them to keep using kids to go exploit tourists to do more of that activity. Uh, so yes, I wanna help kids. I don't like seeing kids suffer. I don't wanna see their parents suffer either. But again, you're putting these children in a position where you're enabling their parents to wanna do more of that with their three-year-old, four-year-old, five-year-old. So uh, politely say, no thank you. So I do wanna to talk to you guys about the rental equipment scam. So whenever you go out to rent something, they're gonna have you sign all these documents. Pay attention to what you're signing, but they're gonna to try to rush you and whatnot. But just be aware that they're going to try and basically say that you damaged something possibly. I'm not saying everyone's gonna say that because there's a lot of honest people, but take proper video, like go around the vehicle with a video, everything, all the nooks and crannies, really, for like two minutes before you do that. Two people, two different uh, videos, taking all the videos of the inside and the outside because what ends up happening is you rent this vehicle, it comes back and they try to place blame on you for something that was already broken. And then they try to say that they're not gonna give you your $500 deposit back or whatever the deposit was. Plus they're gonna say that you gotta pay all this extra. And it's something that was already there that, you know, so you're getting reeled in and locked into something. Uh, that's why you might want to actually consider just renting from reputable services like Hertz or Enterprise if you can find them. So frustrating that that exists, but yeah, it's something you should pay attention to. All right, here's a big one. You got to watch out for pickpox. These petty theft situations. What they typically do is they kind of bump into you and while they're bumping into you, they stick their hand in your pocket. That's how they pick your pocket. And how do they know what pocket to go in? It's because if you have a cell phone, you'll be using your cell phone out taking pictures. They'll watch you put your cell phone in that pocket. So when you're in a really crowded environment, sometimes shoulder to shoulder, really packed, condensed situations, if you're getting sideswiped or hit really hard from the side, not like painfully hard, but just like kind of like, whoa, you're getting bobbed around because it's like shoulder to shoulder. That might be one of those situations where a, a pickpocket is standing next to you trying to go in your pocket. So he's going to bump your shoulder and you're going to kind of feel that, pay attention to that while he goes in your pocket and just pulls out your cell phone or your wallet. So two things. Don't be too flashy out here, okay? Don't show off that you've got big money. Don't be wearing your Rolex and all of these flashy items. But also, if you're going to be in really crowded areas, 
be aware of where you're putting your cell phone if it's easily accessible by a pickpocket or your uh, camera or your wallet. So it's important to mention that because there are pickpockets out here who will get you. I've had a cell phone uh, personally stolen from me in all my travels. As you guys know, I've been to many countries, so uh, it does happen. I mean, life isn't perfect, but you live and you learn, right? All right, so how about the hotel room scam? You're online, you see something on Expedia or Hotels.com and they've managed to put up a really good picture with some brand new chairs, brand new bed, and then you get to the hotel and you're like, uh, that doesn't look like brand new anything. In fact, that looks like it hasn't even been, you know, updated or renovated or cleaned at all. And you get in there and you're like, well, I just paid top dollar for this hotel and it's really not that good. That happens out here. So you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to the reviews on Google and the app that you're booking on. That's what I do. So I'll go to the reviews on the Google Maps. I'll go to the reviews on the app, hotels.com, Expedia, and I'll try to get really uh, honest reviews. I'll look at what the negatives say, and then I'll look at what the positives say. Something that's usually below uh, four stars, kind of a red flag, especially if it's, uh, over eighty dollars so it's just you kind of learn how to like balance out what's what's good what's not but um pay attention to that because there are hotel scams all right guys so overall that's going to conclude this particular list there's obviously things that some of you in the audience may have had happen please share your wisdom your advice in the comments below with other people who are going to read those comments but also I just want to really make this clear. Mexico has been a really good time for the last few weeks that I've been here. I would say overall, it's not something you need to be scared of. All I'm doing is giving you some guidelines to pay attention, rules of the road, to help make you a bit more aware consciously of some things that can cause you challenges that might ruin your trip. So if you can avoid those problems, that would be a good thing. And that's why we make this video. It's not to pick on Mexico. It's not to pick on anything. You, the naive tourist, is just to say, hey, these are things that can happen. If you're new to Island Hopper TV, you can subscribe. Turn on the bell to get notified when we make a new video. Watch some of these other videos right here. We've got lots of videos for you to watch from across Mexico. We'll see you on the next one.